Thank you very much, uh, Mabel, <laughs> President of CCG, and dear friend, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. The timing of this topic indeed is extremely important because today is also International Youth Day. So the, the timing of this particular event is significant because today when we look around the world, the world faces a great opportunity of reaping a demographic dividend. And a demographic dividend is about young people. It is because in the early 80s and into the 90s, China reaped a demographic dividend by investing in educating, in skilling, in empowering its women and girls, in making sure that there was gradual employment everywhere, and that is why you saw the leapfrogging of the Chinese economy, which started at a mere $180 per capita GDP in 1970. That is the opportunity that is presented in Africa, where the median age of the entire continent is about 18. And to reap a demographic dividend, we have to invest in exactly those E's that I mentioned in education and skills and in bond and making sure that women are able to achieve their full human potential and in finding enduring employment. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. There is 1.8 billion young people across the world in a population of about seven people. And the UN Secretary General, my boss, Antonio Guterres, has said, has described that they face incredible and very significant challenges, not just the challenge of COVID-19, which has led to more and more young people getting out of school and lacking opportunities for employment, but also the deteriorating climatic conditions. Climate change is real. We've just seen the recent report by IPCC which has talked about a global red, red alert. They have seen increasing levels of inequality, gender inequality. Besides that, we are seeing high levels of populations which have traditionally been able to move forward and get out of poverty have fallen back into poverty. Most that are affected by this are young people. And therefore, young people are increasingly leaving their homes to get to greener pastures looking for more opportunities. So this initiative today is so very important because it puts the spotlight on the centrality and the responsibility of we as policy makers, leaders, adults in reshaping the narrative of the future of the world and that future of the world will be guided by young people. They are the resources that we have to engage because they are resourceful. They will be the architects of redefining the climate emergency that we are confronting. They are fighting increasingly for equality, of gender equality, for social justice. They are championing a more sustainable world. So we must ensure their inclusion, their participation, and above all, their voices. So I commend the commitment of the various initiatives that are being taken place, including this one, to achieve the sustainable development goals, because that is the North Star that we have in front of us. That is real. And this is that decade of action to achieve the SDG. And as the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Muhammad, often reminds us, that we have to flip the orthodoxy. We have to do things differently in order to accelerate our efforts towards achieving the SDGs. Again, the young people will be the vanguard of that change. So as Mabel read out the letter of President Xi Jinping, let me quote from that letter. Here he says he's expressing hope that young people at home and abroad will enhance mutual understanding, develop friendship, achieve mutual success, thus contributing to building a community which is prosperous, where there is more peace, where there is more benevolence, where there is, above all, more compassion. For that, the United Nations system in China, ladies and gentlemen, stands ready to support every initiative by the government 
by organizations such as CCG and forge alliances and partnerships to advance the youth agenda. Thank you.